Καλημέρα και από εμά. Αυτή τη φορά. Καλημέρα και από εμά, λοιπόν, όντω. Αυτή τη φορά είμαστε στο μικρόφωνο εγώ και η Ελίνα. Το εγώ είμαι ο Κωνσταντίνο, αν δεν με έχετε αναγνωρίσει και από εχθέ. Ένα μικρό disclaimer για τη συνέντευξη που ακολουθεί θα γίνει στα αγγλικά. Ε, και θα έχουμε μαζί μα ε, τη Λία Παπάζογλου, co-founder τη ε, Οικογένεια, που θα μα πει κάποια ενδιαφέροντα πράγματα. So let's proceed in English. Hi. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good morning. Καλημέρα. Καλημέρα. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming here today. Of course, it's my pleasure. Okay, so let's start with the first question. Uh, tell us about Ecogenia. What's the main vision and mission of Ecogenia, and through which actions are you trying to achieve them? Great. Thank you for the question. Thank you for having me. It's really exciting to be here. Uh, so Ecogenia is an NGO in Greece. We are two years old as of this week, so we're celebrating Happy a milestone. Happy birthday. Thank you. Uh, and we, we are an NGO that envisions a society where young people have an active role to play through civic service. So what exactly does that mean? What do we do? Uh, we actually mobilize teams of Greek youth in civic service projects on a localized level that focus on climate action. So that's what we're aiming to do. That's our vision and mission. And we're currently, like I said, we're two years old, so we've, we've done some pilot projects and we're trying to demonstrate the concept. Uh, but we do have a big vision of becoming a national climate core program that actually mobilizes thousands of young Greeks all over the country in these types of projects. Go big or go home, as exactly. they say. Exactly. So can I ask like a question on that? What do you think is the difference between volunteering and civic service? That's a great question, and honestly, it's a common question that we do get. Uh, civic service is a bit of a newer concept for Greece. Mm. So we do, we really do get this question quite a bit, so much so that one of our board members, Costa Panos Milarisis, the, the co-founder of Ethelon, recently wrote a blog post about this. So if anybody would like to read up more on it, I encourage you to go to our website and check out uh, our recent blog post on this exact topic. But the biggest difference really is that civic service is a paid service term uh, and it's a bit more structured than your typical volunteering uh, opportunity so what exactly does that mean we kind of we've identified five big differences civic service has structure it's a very dedicated time commitment uh, you do receive benefits this is the, probably the biggest difference so you receive a stipend you receive social services uh, so because we do recognize that volunteering is a privilege right it takes time Uh, a lot of people are so busy, they don't necessarily have a lot of time to give back to the community, even if they would like to. Uh, so that's the biggest difference. People are being compensated for a certain time commitment to commit their service projects. Uh, they also receive training and mentoring and coaching. So this is another big difference. It's very structured. Young people that participate do get a lot of benefits uh, to help with their career progression, to make sure they're receiving very specific skills for the projects that they're going to be undertaking. And we also see a significant role for the government, for the state to play, to help young people, you know, contribute actively to some of society's biggest challenges. So those are some of the differences. They're very complementary, though, right? Volunteering uh, and civic service go hand in hand. We see young people that go through civic service. We've seen in France and the U.S. They're more likely to volunteer as adults throughout their life if they've done a civic service term. They understand the needs of the community better. They have relationships with NGOs. Uh, so they're able to kind of, you know, design their life after in a way where maybe they can continue l becoming lifelong volunteers. Uh, and in the same way in the States and in, in France, uh, where the, the biggest kind of civic service programs exist currently, uh, a lot of civic service programs help support different volunteer efforts. So either through directly supporting through additional volunteering or maybe helping manage volunteers. If there's a disaster, for example, there's a lot of examples that show how civic service can help help support the volunteer movements as well. So they go hand in hand. There are some definitely notable differences. Uh, but they, we do hope that young people that go through our program become lifelong volunteers in their communities, uh, however they can do that. It's because it's actually more of a state of the mind and also a value to become a volunteer and remain one through your life. Okay, um, based on what you said, like, What's your first impression regarding the first pilot projects you have run up until now? Very good question. So we executed our first pilot project in the spring of 2020. Uh, it took 
I think about two years actually of prep work for us to get to the point where we could actually implement uh, a pilot project. And what we found is a few really exciting things. I mean, a pilot is a test, right? You really you don't know what to expect when you're trying something new. And of course, we had a hypothesis. We thought it would be successful. I'm happy to say it was. Uh, and some of the reaffirming things we found is that young people in Greece do want to do something like this. Uh, you know, we did get a lot of skepticism, I would say, from, from some people thinking, oh, young people won't sign up for this. You know, it's, uh, people want you know, long-term work, and of course they want those things. But what civic service can do is provide maybe an experiential learning opportunity, right? It's, it's not as common in Greece to have a gap year or to have opportunities outside of a typical academic setting or internship, right? It's, it's different. Uh, and so the young people that were signing up for our project were eager to have a different kind of experience. Uh, many of them didn't have any experience necessarily in climate change or maybe not even in volunteering, but they were eager to learn. So it provided a safe space and also a compensated place for them to be able to explore those sides of themselves. So that's, I would say, really exciting learning number one is that young people in Greece do want to do this type of project. We had a lot of applications uh, for both pilots and, and we were able to you know, fill teams of really eager and excited young people. So that was really uh, great to see. And the same thing, the communities we were working in, we were, uh, you know, we, we faced challenges as being an NGO Unfortunately, in Greece, it's not, not new information. People are skeptical about NGOs and their intentions and communities, and are they actually going to be doing good work? Uh, so we were invited to, to work in certain communities uh, for our pilot projects, but they were certainly you know, paying attention closely. Okay, what's this going to happen? What's going to happen here? Uh, and we, you know, needless to say, we've won them over. Uh, we completed, you know, what we set out to do in each of those locations for the pilots. Uh, we were welcomed back for continued work there. Uh, and it was exciting to see the intergenerational connection between the young people that were there to do their project and the, and the maybe the elder, uh, or older, I should say, community members that maybe were, you know, watching us with a close eye, <laughs> trying to really understand what we were doing. So there was a, a lot of intergenerational and deeper connections that were made. So. That was validating. Uh, and just the third quick point I would say as an impression is we did receive, we've received a lot of uh, warm and encouraging support from our current donors and supporters, especially the Helizoni Foundation, which I would say they've, they've invested a lot in us and they believed in us when we were just an idea, just a concept. Uh, and it's been exciting to see how others have rallied around us to, to make sure that we can continue to do the work we do. It's really interesting how you give uh, young people the opportunity to engage with climate change for such a cause. I really found it genuinely interesting. And I know you recently made an educational trip to California, and I want to ask you what your next steps are for pilot programs and if this trip to California has something to do with it. Yes, uh, it does. <laughs> Thank you for asking this question. Uh, so about a year ago, uh, we were encouraged, or really I was reaching out to different civic service programs, trying to find more mentors and uh, mentors and coaches for our staff. Because again, this is the first time this type of work has been done in Greece, but uh, this, is, this is done at such an impressive scale in places like the States and definitely in California. So the oldest uh, conservation corps is in California, the California Conservation Corps. And frankly, I was reaching out to those folks just saying, hey, can you maybe hop on a call with us for an hour and share some of your best practices with our team? And they went so far above and beyond that, they ended up giving us a grant for our whole team to go to California to learn directly from them in the field, see their young people on these conservation projects and disaster management projects. It was amazing. Uh, and they continue to go above and beyond because they now are planning to send a team of young people from California to Greece to you know, work here for two months alongside our next cohort. So this is gonna be stage two of that kind of training program with the California team. And so the next phase of our plan is to basically incorporate the best practices from that California trip, what we saw in the field. We've designed a disaster management, a hybrid disaster management and ecotourism program, so trail building and trail maintenance in the Mount Olympus region. So our home base will be Litokoro, also where I live. Uh, my family's from Northern Greece. And we will have a team of young Greeks through an eco yanya term, and also these Californians working side by side, helping you know in the region with, again, trail and conservation work, as well as preparing the region for 
disasters, especially wildfire prevention, uh, which unfortunately this summer we've, we've seen a lot of devastating uh, effects of. So Californians have gotten really good at this. They've been around since the 70s, uh, this, co this conservation corps. So we're really excited to bring them here uh, and they will help us showcase to some national stakeholders especially what this could look like if we were to bring it to scale here in Greece. Okay, and if I have checked correctly, Biden administration also launched the first of its kind American Climate Corps program, right? Yes! Congrats uh, to the Biden administration, <laughs> not a political statement, but can you tell us yes. a bit more and probably how this is going to um, influence you or give you more like insights of what we are going to do here in Greece? Absolutely. Thank you for asking that question as well. It's, it's extremely exciting for so many reasons. I mean, I am Greek American, so I'm, I'm proud of this moment. Uh, it, it's rare. It feels like these days we have moments to be proud Americans, <laughs> if I do say so myself personally. So I'm very proud to see that this has happened. This has happened, though, because young people fought for it. Uh, the Sunrise Movement and the climate activists in the States really being, uh, you know, led again by young people advocating for this specific uh, thing to happen. So the, the Climate Corps in the States is going to be a massive uh, implementer of climate projects all over the country. And it is definitely something that we can look to uh, and now reference, right, when we're speaking with stakeholders here in Greece, what we are trying to do is exactly what they are launching, right? We want to have a National Climate Corps here, uh, and now the Americans are, are about to start that program, and again, we're going to have some Americans here to help us show how we can incorporate some of those best practices, because in the end, you know, the Greek reality is different than the American reality, and how we design a Climate Corps in Greece is going to look different than it's designed in the States, but the basic concept stands, right? And so we're thrilled. We, we do have a collaboration with the U.S. Embassy as well next year, and so we're excited to, to be having them at the table with us, thinking through how to bring in some of these best practices from the Biden administration and the Climate Corps launch and the California Conservation Corps, and bringing all of this into the Greek reality as we experiment here with our pilots. Saying Greek reality, I have, I think, the last question. How did you integrate yourselves into the local communities where you're implementing your projects? And actually, what was the process and how do you feel now by seeing the results of your efforts? Yeah, so this, again, as an American, as a Greek American, I was very, very aware that on some level I'm coming into a community that is not fully my own, right? And I'm, a, I'm aware of my American privilege and I really wanted to ensure that as we try to build something here, it feels Greek. Right, and so it was very important for me, even just from the start, to have a Greek co-founder. So she's not here today, but Erika, if you're listening, hello. Erika Spagaku is my co-founder. She's from Athens, and the rest of our team, you know, they're they're Greek, and that was very important to me, just just to start with. I didn't want it to feel like an American coming in trying to build an American program, and the same as we were designing our pilot projects, we wanted it to be locally led and be something that the community actually needed. We didn't want to come in with assumptions about what a community wants and needs and how we could, you know, again, design this effort. So, um, so we found champions in both of the places we piloted. So that way, you know, as we, as we do experiment with young people in something that's never been done before, we know we'll at least have one, if not several, champions locally to help us integrate the project so that it would be successful. So that's, that's been very important for us and, uh, and has proven to be successful. And as we grow, we hope that we have a brand recognition where people locally will call us and say, hey, you know, we have a really exciting project we'd like to do next year. We really could use five or six teams of young people to help us implement. And that's, that's the stage we'd like to get at, where local leaders are actually calling us and we can help meet their needs through these young uh, climate action teams. Okay. And you actually have your local heroes in these communities that help you, like, integrate yourselves even more. Okay, thank you very much for this discussion. Thank Probably you. we are going to speak again soon. I hope so. And if anybody listening is interested, hopefully we'll be recruiting for our next cohort in the spring. So keep an eye on our website uh, because we'd love to have you join us. If you're 18 to 30 years old, uh, we'd love to have you join us on a team. And thank also you. follow them on their social media. They're doing amazing.